an evening with the ladies of Christian in, uh, Women in the UK. So you've got the lovely Stoney. Can you see her waves, guys? She's like, I don't know. I think she thinks she's some kind of pop star tonight, right? You know, before she was doing like that, you know, just like throwing her hair in the air. <laughs> and today, um, Giselle is not able to make it because she's not mm. feeling very well. So get mm. well soon, G, but we know she's listening in. Yes, yeah, she's watching on Facebook live. She's going to be so proud of us. Yes, because Sidoni is getting the hang of this tech fix business. And my name is Dom. I'm an admin here at um, CW UK, which is Christian Women in the UK. So Sidoni is our founder and Giselle is a partner to the ministry. So CW UK is a women's ministry in the UK. And our aim is just to bring Christian women in the UK together. It's exactly what it says on the tin. And we've been, we're almost 2000 members strong now. So feel free to find us on Facebook join in we have laughs we pray for each other and we just fellowship and Giselle runs um, a ministry called Pearls of Grace she's the lead pastor there at Stranra um, yeah in Scotland area so again you can get in touch with Giselle Giselle Storette at um, Christian Women in the UK or just google her, um, her ministry she's our chief tech officer today so Sidoni is deputizing diligently deputizing today <laughs> okay <laughs> so Sidoni what are we gonna talk about tonight I think we had a chat before and you said we were going to talk about um being a Christian in the world today in the yeah. wicked world that we find ourselves in today and just how I suppose how hard it is how challenging it is yeah um definitely. yeah I think that was what we were going to talk about Yes, yes. So we, we need coping strategies, guys. Mm. Think of this as a therapy session. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is for me because I think, I don't know about other people, and I think this is maybe how we started. So Sidoni, you know, when did you get saved? And, you know, when you got saved, how did you find the, this new life compared to the way the world was? And how, how did you, you know, walk in it? Do you know, that's a good question because I was raised in a Christian household. Um, so, you know, my family are Catholic. So I come from a Catholic background. So I've always known God and I've always known Jesus and I've always known that he is the way, the truth and the life, you know. And, and as Catholics, I mean, you're from a Catholic background, you know, we're yes. very religious. I can't say we've got the relationship with God thing quite down to a T yet. But we've certainly got yeah. the religious rituals down to a T. So oh, we don't we, play. We don't play. <laughs> you know, love it, actually. Got, it's good. And we've got all these like prayer books and, and everything to help you engage with, um, you know, prayer and the Christian life. So I suppose from that sense, I've always been a Christian. Um, however, you know, as I grew a bit older, as one does, and, you know, you find your way in the world. I perhaps didn't take it as um, serious as I probably could, maybe because that relationship aspect was missing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the world and its allures and its pulls sort of got me away from it. But then I found my way back. I, don't, I can't say I can pinpoint a moment when I found my way back. But I just, I think just over time and with age, um. And I suppose maybe just, you know, not to blow my own horn, but I got success, career success and monetary success quite early in life. She was loaded, guys. <laughs> wow, loaded is, is a bit of an overstatement. But, <laughs> um, but when you get that quite early in life, you, it, well, it certainly made me stop to think that there's got to be more to life than chasing this. And, as, mm -hmm. you know, I'm talking so after uni 21 22 wow. then I think you know there's got to be more to life than this there's got to be a purpose to my life than chasing this because if this is where I am in my early 20s I could very well be doing exceptionally well you know in my 40s 50s and then what's there to to aim for and I think for me that's probably when the realization that I am more than my 
um, career or monetary successes. There's more to me than than the bag, as as the young kids will say these days. <laughs> wow, that's really interesting. And I think the world that you were in at that time, you know, um, you know, you were enjoying a lot of success. Um, mm-hmm. You know, financially, money was the thing, right? In the kind of world that you were, how mm-hmm. do you? It almost seems very, very antithetical to being a Christian, right? In a place where everybody wants to make a buck, you know, like, let's go, let's go, money, fast cut. How was it then, like, deciding to follow Jesus in that kind of environment? I think that's the thing. It's got to be a personal, it's got to be something you do for yourself, hasn't it? Like, you've got to think, like, I certainly thought, this can't be everything, you know? Like, and and I remember thinking, and this, you know, people are probably going to laugh, but I remember um I was I was sitting one day and in the parable of the rich man came mm. to to mind um you know this is the the man the parable Jesus told where this man had a really bountiful harvest um you know he was actually thinking about how he's going to go to sleep and then wake up in the morning and build an even bigger barn to mm. you know house even more grain that he'd harvested and then you know God turns around and says to him, you fool. Exactly. You You're going to die tonight. In the morning. You die tonight. And mm. I don't know why that scripture came into my mind, but that is certainly for me, like the turning point. I, I seem to remember that parable really, really clearly. And over the course of my Christian life and my, I suppose, my career life as well, that's always been at the forefront of my mind that I literally could drop dead any yeah. minute. Yeah. And if I were to do so where's eternity like where am I going you know like I could live here Jesus lived on earth for 33 years and you know in modern standards that's a short life but in in those days you know life (laughs) yeah Yeah. you know and then you just think well what is there (laughs) absolutely and I think that's a big thing I remember years ago um reading or reading something about South Korea and I think that was a similar thing that happened there in the sense that you know um for a long time South Korea was quite poor Mm. and then they had this amazing leader who brought in a lot of development and so like you know they have pretty high economic standards now Mm -hmm. but they said what began began to happen one of the things that helped Christianity in a way take a foothold there was that people were like okay we've reached all this economic prosperity we thought it was going to make us happy but mm. having all this money is not making us happy. There's got to be more. Mm. So it's really good that um, you were able to see it like that because I think sometimes people find those things, try to find happiness in other things, right? Mm. You know, you think there's got to be more. Maybe if I partied a bit more, maybe if I bought all these expensive clothes, maybe if I, you know, dated so many people. Mm. And for some people, the extreme is drugs, right? Or gambling. Mm. And it's not unusual. I mean, I live in London and thank God for the pandemic has kind of, it's kind of cooled down a bit. There was a time when you would pick up the paper and every so often some young, really promising person in the world of finance would go and stand on top of a building and, you know, jump. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you just think, look, your CV looks amazing. You know, you're only 25 or whatever. You have your whole life ahead of you. Probably got a lot of money in the bank or at least you have a good job, mm-hmm. you know, so it's always very interesting to see that sometimes in life, the things that we think will make us happy, you know, we are sold this thing, go to school, finish, Mm -hmm. you know, get a job, you know, you know, buy a nice house or flat. You could do all that. And those are very good things to get. But I think the good thing, and I think you're very, in a way, blessed that it happened to you at a relatively young age, Mm -hmm. that in your twenties, you were able to look and say, hey, this, this, this doesn't really satisfy me. Because mm. for some people, that realization comes on much later, right? Mm. So you, know, you are very thoughtful. 20, 20 something <laughs> years old, by the way. Because I know that in my 20s, guys, I was somewhere else. Okay? But I think, you know, I think maybe that's because I had it all. But you see, that's true. Because I think in my 20s, I was still hustling, right? Yeah. So I... I sort of my case is a little bit different from you because in my 20s okay I just left uni but I was like okay I'm trying to find my way in the world I have all these passions how do I express them and Mm. again I had that Catholic thing in me okay I'd gone to grown up in a Catholic home Mm. I had 
you know, benefited from Catholic education from primary school to sixth form. So mm. even if you're not Catholic, those things stay with you. Mm -hmm. And so even at uni, no one was forcing me to go to church. I was doing these things. And I actually think I had some sort of a relationship with Jesus. If I really look back now, mm. like I remember this funny story. So then he was talking about prayer books and in Cameroon, this prayer book culture is huge, right? And I remember walking into the, I discovered that we had a Catholic Truth Society. Mm. Like the big publishers for the Catholic Church. And we used to get these books in Cameroon. You don't know who they are. And then I saw their bookshelf. And I walked in and I saw, oh my goodness, a simple prayer book. <laughs> <laughs> that book even now i'll still buy it i, I may not agree mm. with all the prayers in there but a simple prayer book is the book guys mm. and i remember getting it and getting my rosary and all these things so i did have some kind of relationship uh -huh. with jesus but what's so interesting is that i always almost found like there was some kind of blockage mm -hmm. i almost felt like something like i almost I kind of knew that this could be more, this could be better, mm -hmm. but it was literally like there was some invisible force blocking that relationship from being more. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, you get exposed, you begin to read, you, you get exposed to other ideas. So I was mm -hmm. like, wow, okay. There are other schools of thought here. Let's mm -hmm. see what the world has to offer. And I think because also I had questions that I wasn't, I just wasn't finding the answers to these questions in church, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, mm -hmm. okay, let me go and see what other ideas have to offer and so you know it it got my church attendance dropped because mm -hmm. at one point actually I deliberately decided to stop going to church because wow. at one point it was just a performance mm -hmm. and even I had enough sense to know that God does not enjoy performances so I said mm -hmm. I'll stop you and I will deal with this you know and I think that God was very merciful because of course that was my intention to kind of deal with it me and God but in mm -hmm. that process I kind of got sidetracked but eventually, I think God remembered that and was like, fine, you and I were supposed to deal with this. Like, what happened? You know, 40 mm. year break, you've had enough comeback. But just like you, Sidoni, I think it was a scripture that actually, like, God does this thing where He brings you back gently. You don't even know that you're marching mm. back, but you mm. are. Mm. And I remember coming from work one day, I think that was 2019, no, 2020. Mm. And I had just had a series of very bad things happen to me at that point. Um, yeah, things were just not going the way I'd expected in my life. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to keep optimistic. And then for whatever reason, I had not opened the Bible in a long time. Mm -hmm. And the story of the woman at the well came to my head. Mm. And I, I don't know why, I just liked that story. And I was there trying to, what's so interesting was, I was actually kind of trying to interpret it mm. in my own kind of way, given that mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. do any Bible study. And it just turns out that it was almost like God was prepping my mind for the things that were going to happen. Mm. So I think for me, it was almost as if my eyes were just open to this whole new mm -hmm. world, right? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I think I'd always had an, an idea of this. I just did not know. You know mm. how you, you have ideas, but you don't know that you have ideas? Because yeah. the notion of the kingdom of God to me was the most refreshing thing ever. I was like, wow. In my head, I really wanted it because mm. I thought this world is just too much. You know, mm. some days it's ridiculous. But mm. also on the other extreme, I was seeing this type of religion that I just <laughs> was not happy about. Yeah. It was either too restrictive or too dramatic. And I was like, eh -eh. so I was like, it wouldn't be nice if there was a third way. Mm. I really thought about it. So mm. when I, you know, came to Christ and then I found out, oh my God, God is not this like this tyrant who wants to ruin my life. I was like, what? So this is it. This is what, to be honest, I had been looking for for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So it was a it was a, a very refreshing thing to me. Very very mm -hmm. refreshing. I think the difficulty for me then was to see that yes, this kingdom is great. It's great to be a part of it, but you still have to function in the world. Mm -hmm. And that to me, I think, is the difficulty. So this brings me to. How do you see the new walk in the world as a Christian who, you know, you have, you know, your principles, you believe in God, you know that you want to live for him, but yeah. you come up across, you know, come up, come up against people who try to, who ch outrightly challenge your principles, right? Maybe in the things oh. they say or in the mm. way they, they, they do. How do you do that and still maintain the grace to carry yourself the way Jesus would expect you to? I think the fact that... 
the starting point is acknowledging that you are not perfect. Acknowledging that you are a sinful creature with a sinful nature and that you need grace and grace abounds in Christ. Um, and I think that's really because sometimes as Christians, we have the tendency to um, chase perfection of our own will. And we mm. almost think that if we're perfect, Christ will accept us or he will love us more. I mean, we don't, we think that subconsciously, but we act it out that way. Um, and so we're kind of chasing perfection in the hope that that would gain you some brownie points in heaven or that would gain you some brownie points with Christ or whatever. But I think when you accept yeah. that you are yeah. sinful by nature um, and temptation is going to come, but grace abounds. And so by the grace of, of God and, and with, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can resist those, those temptations. Um, but also, yeah. you know that you will fail. You will fail. Um, but where you fail, there's mercy. Where you fail, you're not met with judgment. You're met with mercy and grace. And I think, you know, when you think about it that way, just know that, you know, you're safe. So you have the Holy Spirit working in me. But at the same time, I know I can't do it by myself. I know yes. that I'm a sinful creature. I know that I will fall short. You know, the Bible says that even, you know, our righteousness is like a filthy rag before, before God. There is mm. no way in my current state or in my natural state, I can claim to stand before the throne of grace. There's just, I, I'm not fit. Like yeah. John the Baptist said, no I'm, just not, I'm not even fit to tie his shoelaces, let alone gaze upon his face. Um, yeah. But accepting that I need grace and that I am sinful, I know, you know, when we say the Lord's Prayer says, you know, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, knew. <laughs> he knew that you will not be able to get out of all of it. <laughs> you know, Sometimes you'll be in evil. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's that idea of I can't deliver myself from evil. You know, it's yeah, lead us exactly. not into temptation. Who's leading? Who are you asking to not lead you into temptation? God the Father, because He's that our Father yes, who is exactly. in heaven. So you're saying, Father, please lead me not into temptation. Um, but when temptation comes, and if I should fall into that evil, please deliver me from evil. You're saying, Father, please deliver yeah. me from evil. <laughs> you know, because you know that you, you know, can't. You know do what? I mean, I've seen the Lord's Prayer in a new light now, to be honest, because mm. I think we just say those words, right? And it's a very lovely prayer. Mm. But when you really think about it, I think Jesus was reminding us of our vulnerability because yeah. there are some temptations you don't even need to be near because <laughs> you will fall. You know, when, when I think it's Paul who says, flee fornication, just run yeah. because you think, oh, I'll be strong. No, mm. for some people, in fact, for a lot of people, mm. you can't mm. just run. And then, like you said, sometimes you'll still fall, right? Mm. And God will be like, mm -mm, I need to pluck you out. So okay. I think one of the beautiful things about prayer, prayer humbles us. And when you even look at the themes that Jesus touched with the Lord's prayer, <laughs> I think he was just really telling you, humanity, this is who you are. Mm. He does acknowledge you, does. realize that, you, yeah, you know, realize that you need God from your provisions Mm. To, from your need for communication because it's very interesting that that prayer starts with hello would be thy name right mm -hmm. that should be a priority to praise mm -hmm. god to have mm -hmm. a communication with god and mm -hmm. then he goes down okay i need you i know you guys need to eat mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. give people it's almost like a manual for it is. how you should live and it is, it is right? a manual for how you should live because you know yes. it starts with our father and so he is your heavenly father um, yeah and I think also just realizing that I am, like, you know, like Paul says, we're in the world, but we're not off the world. Not a bit, yes. I am in the world. And for as long as I will, I am in this world, however long the Lord chooses for that to be, trials mm. will abound. Um, you know, the Bible says um, that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Exactly. The Lord delivers them from, you know, from them all. And so, you know, 
trials will abound but God will deliver you you know he didn't say yes, I'll take absolutely. you out of the storm he says I will be with you I will never leave you nor forsake you which means he is there you are going to go through it but he'll be there yes. with you um, yes. and and so when I when I think about that and I'm thinking there's this old song we sing back home this world is not my home <laughs> I know I know I think that's a Jim Reeves song actually this world yeah, we're singing a lot back home. home yeah you know yes I'm just passing through <laughs> and you know what it's usually at funerals <laughs> me too but that is the, that the is funeral the... guy you will hear a lot of gospel it's like suddenly people become very thoughtful oh yeah if you go to a communion party normally you don't play any, well maybe now because there's one or two popular gospel songs of play mm. but when you go to a funeral this playlist is gospel mm. like suddenly everybody remembers oh my goodness my time on this earth is finite mm. i need to think about god mm. but that's the thing yeah. isn't it so, and i think for the christian we have to um always remember that that you know this world is not our home we're just passing through um, this mm. is a mortal body um, on a journey through to immortality with Christ. And, um, you know, our aim here is, is to go through that sanctification process. We've already been justified, you know, in Christ Jesus. But whilst we're here on earth, we need to go through that sanctifi- sanctification process and be more and more like Christ to reflect something of his glory into the world. And that's mm. why I think as a Christian, like Jesus said, there's no way you can light a lamp and cover it. Like, it just, no. if the fire is there and it's burning, people will see it. Like, you can't hide it. Yes. Um, you know, and I think that's part of part of our purpose here on earth as Christians, to reflect God's glory, to, be, to show people God's Absolutely. love. Um, because, you know, heaven will probably be boring on your own. So why not take other people with you? exactly right and there's some people i don't know about you but there are people that i see on earth and i'm like man i want to be in heaven with these people <laughs> I, I think it'll be so fun if they're there too mm-hmm. you know and you, you mentioned something about the body you know this thought of keeping eternity in mm-hmm. mind it's really a good thing because you know the trials of this world can really take your perspective off that you can get so bogged down trying to deal with problems in this world that you forget that there's something mm-hmm. bigger coming right Mm -hmm. and when you talked about our bodies Mm -hmm. our bodies for example you know they get sick you know you get older your body is not as beautiful as it used to be Mm -hmm. so I think for me one of the things that I love again about the kingdom of God is just how how unconventional it is if you like Mm -hmm. like according to the world so for example Mm -hmm. we look at say something like now I mean this has always been the thing right but it's probably more pronounced now just because of more media social media but Mm -hmm. something like body image especially mm-hmm. for women you know when mm-hmm. we were in our 20s it was more about the magazines mm-hmm. now it's instagram and all that mm-hmm. and you see how people are so worried about their body image you know they go to their photos or those who can afford it go to have surgery and then they keep having more and more but wouldn't it be so radical to think that hey first of all this body is just temporary why am I stressing? Because I know that certainly once I came into that realization that this is a temporary body, there are so many like bodily imperfections that I have that I don't bother about now. Because I'm just like, man, when this body is glorified, you are going to be fit as anything. Like those <laughs> muscles, you like basically Serena Williams hasn't started with that muscle structure. Like, so I think about it and my hair is going to be long. I have these ideas, right? <laughs> not necessarily scriptural but hey <laughs> but my point is that i know what you mean of, oh i need to look perfect now mm-hmm. so, because exactly because maybe when you're with god your priorities of beauty are even completely different oh, yeah. but all yeah. i just know is that when we're told that our bodies will be glorified it will be a beauty that you can't imagine so mm-hmm. why would i want to look at myself and begin to hate myself because i've got a few spots or a few stretch marks or i'll think oh i need to bleach my skin to look a certain way mm-hmm. so i really feel that when we keep our eyes on eternity even some of the pressures that we suffer from everyday life mm-hmm. you know it, it certainly changes our perspective because yeah somebody can come and tell me oh you're ugly or whatever and you just be like all right well first of all to god i'm fine so what mm-hmm. you're saying is mm-hmm. and secondly well even if my body is not 
perfect by whose standards, right? Mm -hmm. But God, God's standards of perfection are the only standard of perfection that we should mm -hmm. strive to. So if he's telling you that he needs to glorify your body, mm -hmm. it's probably because of all the things that sin has done to our body. Oh, yeah. Going to, so, yeah, I really love the idea of having, you know, God's perspective is very interesting. It's very... Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. And that brings us to the question then, Sidoni. It's nice. I think when you're among Christians, it's very easy to have these sort of conversations and to feel pumped and everything. But how do you hold it? Because I know that there are times when I'm telling you I'm dealing with something and God's perspective is not showing up very easily. Right? <laughs> I'm getting sex. I mean, even just today, I had to kind of control myself on certain things, <laughs> right? <laughs> so sometimes, like... <laughs> you know it's so funny i think i have to share this testimony god can do this thing where he would literally interrupt me mm. and i remember one day i was trying to do something i was extremely frustrated mm. i was so annoyed i mean I, I i used to do it serious anger mm. issues i'm not gonna lie and then sidoni just suddenly sent me a text like i think it was <laughs> even a joke what my first reaction was like i'm not gonna have a question i don't need to be and then I literally heard, it was almost as if God moved in the room. And like, I'm actually the one who did this. So once, it's like my eyes just open and I calm down. Mm. And literally, so sometimes God himself will appear to put this perspective. Mm. Like you're too much if I leave you. But how do you manage to either hold on to God's perspective or switch? Because I tell you, this work can try you sometimes. <laughs> Do you know what? So, I don't know. God, I always think God's got a sense of humor, right? But I also think God oh, knows. That's a huge one. He knows us so well that He knows which bits of our character needs refining. And He knows which bits of our personalities aren't quite where He wants it to be. Um, and so he'll he'll constantly help us work through those issues. Um, <laughs> he's the ultimate therapist. He's the wonderful counselor. I mean, you know, he's yeah. the prince of peace. He's everything. But in yeah. him is, is he's the whole package, literally. So you're just going to come to him with your because you're a diamond, right? If, to use this analogy, you're a diamond and you're rough around the edges, but you just need yes. refining sometimes. Um, but personally, I think, I always think of God's um, character and that mm. helps me. So, see, I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite. I don't have anger problems. Like, you know, I, I am slow to anger. Um, but when I do get angry, I almost have to remind myself that, I have to forgive like Christ has forgiven me. And so I mm. think it's very important as Christians to know the character of, of our father, to know the character of Christ, um, because I think that would help. So, and, and it's almost like, you know, a, a, if you think of your earthly parent, mm. if you know their character and you know what they like and you know what they dislike and you know what they're like, you're more likely to emulate that. You're more likely yeah. to want to live in the way that pleases them than if you have no blooming clue about who they are, what they like, what they don't like. So I think it's important as Christians to really know the character of God. Um, yes. Because those times will come where you say you're tested beyond your imagination. Mm. And you'll just have to remember that scripture that just says when you've done all you can just stand yeah like, and sometimes that means literally standing <laughs> <laughs> oh honestly sometimes standing means walk away it, it does but also you've got yeah. to appreciate that for people that are doers you have people that are doers and people have lists their to-do lists um mm. if you say to that sort of person just stand that's torture yeah it's torture to that person um but then you also have the people that are so laid back they're like god i know you've got this and god's like well no part of the reason why i've brought you here is so you can improve you your, your right <laughs> you know yeah you can improve your communication <laughs> you know yeah. yeah 
So I think, you know, you need to know the character of your father and you also need to, you know, have that relationship with him. And that will come from reading the scripture and praying. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes. And I think, you know, sometimes, like you say, sometimes you're in a, in a situation where you just think, God, how, 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 you know, but, you know. I think, yeah, there are times when, <laughs> and I'm not particularly proud of this, but there are situations when, honestly, I had to put that phone down because mm. it was either that or something terrible mm. and I'm one of those people I will look back I can be I can actually I'm one of those people I can actually be very angry and really restrain myself mm-hmm. so for me to lose it is a very rare thing mm. but I remember once I put the phone down I thought oh my goodness no actually it's rude to put the phone down on people shouldn't mm-hmm. do that but mm-hmm. in a way I think going off my own strength if I had not put that phone down it would have been something else so but what you say about the character of God is really very interesting Mm. and I think one of the most important things about God is that as a father he's very approachable Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know when we 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 know these weaknesses it's okay to go to God and say look this was happening to me because many of us or I don't know about you but some of us grew up with this very religious view of God right as he's Mm. up there you're down here you can't but one of the best things about God to me is that I can speak to him you know Mm. I can speak to him about things that I even feel uncomfortable telling people Mm. like I've gone from that place where I used to think okay you can pray about certain things these are holy but other things you can't talk to God about yeah. guys you can talk to god about sex by the way okay just so he you knows know everything so you know just say just say it like he knows well, i'm just talking about the things that people are uncomfortable with mm, right? like, I know. Like, your sex. so i think that i'm at the point where i can actually go to god and i say yeah even i realize that i have these character issues mm. please help me and god mm. is really interesting because when you find yourself in that position mm. when you ask for help that help will come. You will realize that a, a situation where maybe you would have flown off the handle, you suddenly feel this calm. Yeah. You suddenly have this idea in your head yeah. as to how to handle the situation. Yeah. So um, that brings me to a very good companion that we often forget we have. Yeah. Because I feel like you just cannot navigate this world without the Holy Spirit. Right. So, yeah. I mean, but it's not, before we get yeah. to that, actually, let me just say that we have something really, really powerful, and I don't think a lot of Christians realize this. Yes. It's the power of confession. Yeah. The power of confession can keep you very humble, but also accountable. Yes. So if you know that, you know, it says in the Bible, if one of you sins against, you know, your brother, go and meet him and confess to him, you know, and and if as a Christian, personally anyway, if I know that I have to confess a wrongdoing to somebody or I've offended somebody, that's a big deterrent for me. That's like, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> I'm praying for the Holy Spirit. Confession is not a comfortable thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. I'm really sorry, but um, I kind of stole your 50 quid. Yes. <laughs> the power of confession yeah. is twofold. It makes yes. you humble because it makes you actually oh, it does. wrongdoing. Um, but mm-hmm. it also puts you at the point where you're asking for mercy from somebody yes. else. And that's yes. a really vulnerable place to be. Where Absolutely. You're like, I'm really sorry. I, I, I have offended you because I did this, I did that, or I said this and I said that. And please, will you forgive me? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of Christians don't really appreciate the power of confession um Mm, and when somebody confesses and asks for forgiveness please forgive them if you want your heavenly father to forgive you just please don't withhold forgiveness for for no good reason because christ does not withhold forgiveness (laughs) to show them because and and i think also again it's about that thing of setting yourself apart from the culture right Mm. because i think we live in a world now where forgiveness is seen as weakness and you know, a you have people, culture at the moment. Yeah. Like you have people who say, no, 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 because they feel like if it's almost like people don't understand what forgiveness is. So people really feel that forgiving somebody is letting them get away with it. So they're like, no, mm. I'm going to hold on to this anger to teach you a lesson. You will mm. never do this again. What they don't really understand is that if somebody really means it when they are asking for, for forgiveness, right? Mm. The fact that you have forgiven them, they'll be so grateful that they will go out of their way to never do that again 
you know, mm -hmm. I remember reading somewhere that repentance is changed behavior and it's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are times when I've done something to somebody and, you know, I go and I say, I'm sorry. And if they say, okay, look, let's forget about this. Let's never talk about this. I would, I know that in some ways when you offend people, you learn boundaries. Mm -hmm. So you know that this thing offended this person last time. You will never do it again. I've experienced that in relationships with friends. It could be me doing something to them all day. But if you're in a relationship with people where you're both mature, mm -hmm. that's the that's where you can actually have a silver lining in this mm -hmm. cloud of conflict, right? So what you said is really true because I think sometimes even in the body of Christ, people struggle. Pride is not, yeah. you know, pride is a sin, right? Oh even yeah. Like God brings brings that thing about pride. So even as us Christians, we must not say that, oh, um, I'm not going to forgive this person because you're yeah. acting like you're holier than that person. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, I understand. Some things that people do are harder to forgive than others. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, it, it may be a process. And it's okay to tell that person that you know what, I've heard you. Um, just allow me time to process this. Mm -hmm. You know, you may not even be ready to, you know, just restart your relationship with the person you may not even mm -hmm. be ready to speak to them yet but at least and i think that also for people who want to be forgiven please don't pressure people to forgive you if somebody <laughs> tells you <laughs> because some people are very vain they feel entitled to forgiveness because you know i don't know you guys used to hang out a lot and you're really missing this hanging out <laughs> <laughs> get over it so you can go back to good times that's actually narcissistic behavior <laughs> so i think you know, give the person time and they'll work it through. And God is amazing. You know, he will He will melt that person's heart to the point where, you know, mm -hmm. you find people doing the most incredible things for people who have hurt them deeply. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a process and it can really happen. So we also really need to, um, we need to, to believe in the power of forgiveness. Because I think sometimes we pray the Lord's Prayer or we sit through sermons in church but we don't really believe because forgiveness mm. is a page opener. You can really start a new chapter in your life if you forgive somebody. It pushes mm -hmm. you, to, it, it propels you into your future because mm. it's two things, right? Either you and the person reconcile and mm. then you now know how to deal with each other better, which is great. Mm -hmm. Or you, recon you, you, you forgive them, you don't hold anything against them, but you know now that maybe it's better if you do life apart, which is yeah. still good because you are both open to new experiences. Exactly. There are, even for the person who is forgiven, they learn, they may realize that, hey, this behavior cost me a, a good friendship. So mm -hmm. in future, I will treat people better. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you may not be their, their friend anymore, but you've helped them. Mm -hmm. And if they're mature enough, they will always you know, appreciate it. They'll say, okay, she and I we may not be the best of friends now, but she mm. taught me how to treat people better and i really appreciate that mm -hmm. so yes there is so much power in confession and i think we must do it i mean confessing like sidoni said you have to put your pride down mm -hmm. but also sometimes if you're really struggling with something and you have somebody that you can talk to go and confess to them it could, because mm -hmm. like you said sidoni if you can hold somebody accountable right mm -hmm. you you can, to find somebody to hold you accountable is if it's a pastor in your church if mm -hmm. it's you know, one of the counselors it could be a good friend and you know what's so mm -hmm. interesting sometimes that person doesn't even have to be a christian mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are some people who may not be christian but they are very upright people mm -hmm. and maybe they are very good at what they do right mm -hmm. so for example i don't know you may be somebody who is who you spend money carelessly you have this friend of yours who is a Muslim or even an atheist. They are excellent with money and mm -hmm. they are very disciplined. And they always tell you, look, you should spend your money better. Go and talk to that person. And they may be the one to say, okay, let's sit down every end of the month. Look at your budget. Did you go over budget? Did you? There are some friends like that who will take it upon themselves to help mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be too proud and always feel like, wow, you know, we, should, we especially sometimes you think I'm a Christian. I should be seen in a certain light. Mm -hmm. No. Christians yeah. are struggling with pretty much everything that people in the world are struggling That's with. Very true. Let's That's be true. Real. The but only like difference you have the Holy Spirit. Exactly. <clears throat> And that's why I think this last few minutes with God, I think it's, in, it's good to, for us to actually discuss the importance of the Holy Spirit because we're told, right, that when you, mm -hmm. the difference between you and the person in the world is the Holy Spirit, full stop. Mm -hmm. So what, why then, Sidoni, how do we, how do we make the most of this friend that we have? This person that's sitting in us and saying, use me. And a lot of Christians don't even know, you know, 
how do we walk with the Holy Spirit to stand firm against the things that are happening in this world and just to grow as Christians? I think because when Jesus was, was going, he said he was going, but he was going to send us somebody that will come and be with us until he came back. And that was going to be the Holy Spirit. So, you know, the Holy Spirit is there. Um, I think we, I think people don't really realise that he's, that he's there. Yes, because the Holy Spirit is very chilled. Yes, but he helps us. A lot. Um, And I don't think people actually realise that he helps us. I think in certain Christian circles, the Holy Spirit has quite, you know, is pushed to the forefront and is discussed a lot. And, you know, a lot is made of about (laughs) about the Holy Spirit. You almost see his power only when people are demonstrating and flying. And... Exactly. <laughs> in, in certain um, Pentecostal, yes. maybe even charismatic movements. Yes. You know, the Holy Spirit is pushing yeah, the power. I can't the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Um, but I think... Well, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, I mean, I was going to say, I think every believer has got the Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit work, walks with every believer I think that's the only way um that we have the spirit of discernment I think that's the only way we can you know we can navigate certain issues you know um in the bible says if any man lacks wisdom let him ask for it and and so just the process of living life um Mm -hmm. God's way can only happen with the help of the Holy Spirit yes definitely if you don't if if you don't have the help of the holy spirit you probably fall at every hurdle because the way god empowers us to live his life is through the holy spirit yes um, so yes you know god wants us to live life his way but the only way we can do that is through the holy spirit and so like i said i know some circles for example you know the catholic um circle i speak for catholics because you know i'm I, we're catholics we're ex-catholics or we come from catholic backgrounds um they're not big on the holy spirit the way yeah except <clears throat> hold on kind of i would say well, that. if you compare them to the way the the charismatic pentecostal yeah. movement yeah. yeah through the holy spirit they're yeah. not you know it's not something no not like that awesome. maybe the charismatic catholics but not the rest not certainly the, not i think conservative think, catholics yeah. The Catholic Church is interesting, though, because I think, like, the the, the, the work on... In the Catholic Church is a very intellectual church, guys. Mm-hmm. And I would really... um, I would really... What's the word I'm trying to use here? Like, I'd encourage everybody to read the writings of the doctors of the Catholic Church. They are mm-hmm. brilliant. A lot of the theology that we know today actually comes from people like that, St. Augustine, Teresa of Avila, all those people. Mm-hmm. And these guys were writing under some heavy inspiration right mm. so some of even though like Sidonie said you don't see a lot of that a lot of the work that's been done on the Holy Spirit actually comes from the writings mm. that are there in libraries in the Catholic Church but I certainly remember like during confirmation right you're told mm. about the Holy Spirit that's supposed to be when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit I was confirmed mm. at 13. <laughs> yeah I think I was as I well think baptism, 13 baptism probably manifested like 27 years later mm. okay and mm. they came by the baptism, it happened. But and even songs, right? Pentecost, the Catholic Church makes a huge thing of the, mm-hmm. the Feast of Pentecost. And even the songs like Come Holy Ghost, those songs are beautiful. Mm-hmm. So the work is there. I just wish, yeah, there would be a greater awareness of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And 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 but it's you know, the Holy Spirit is there. We can't say that he's not there just because just because people are not aware of it or they don't talk about it does not mean it's not there. Yeah. Oh, um, they're very much there. It's a he, just, by the way, to the Holy Spirit's a person. Yes, he. Just because he, yes, it's, it's part of the Trinity, isn't he? So, yeah, just because he or people choose to not talk about him doesn't mean he's not there. Yeah, he's there. Um, and yeah, mm-hmm. when you're aware of his presence, honestly, it's like anything else. The more you're aware of his presence, the more you, you begin to work with him mm-hmm. and the more he begins to help you. I mean, the Holy Spirit will help you in the most mundane things that you will not mm. believe mm. seriously and you know sometimes i think christians are actually working with the holy spirit and don't they don't know you know when mm. you think oh a voice in my head that's what i mean guys, that's, that's what the I holy mean. spirit the holy spirit is there working but 
people yes, so you just don't appreciate him. <laughs> So yeah, the Holy Spirit is like it's like that. Is the Holy Spirit is a bit like moms? They do everything, but people don't always notice how, yeah, how and, um, and, and important they are until they are not there. <laughs> exactly, and I think that's the that's the that's the main thing, isn't it? Like people don't really know that it's the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit's there. You know, he's there all the time in the background. He's walking with you all the time, um, yes. and the only way you can live out god's way is with the help of the holy spirit because otherwise you can't you know? oh yeah he's there otherwise he's your spiritual you petrol so... guys yes he's definitely your spiritual petrol so it's good to fill up you know by just being aware of the holy spirit through prayer through meditation mm-hmm. he's the one who helps us understand the bible you know for those who have the gift of speaking in tongues you know the holy spirit helps you there to mm-hmm. strengthen your spirit but also just to, because the know, holy spirit or you're not just because you're not showing, I know what she's going or you to don't do. feel like you know how I feel about this. But just because you you don't think that the Holy Spirit is not manifesting in you the way certain Christian circles think. Oh, that's a topic. That's a whole topic. Exactly. That's a very good point. Because sometimes Holy Spirit can be very quiet. And you know what's yeah. so interesting, Sidonie? Even when I was not a believer, this mm. is just how powerful the holy spirit is even when the holy spirit is not living in you he will walk with you mm. i can assure you i i have said to Sidonie before the person in the trinity that i was very easily aware of was the holy spirit mm. from when i was a child and so even when i had all my doubts and i said oh this christianity thing forget it somehow i still respected the holy spirit somehow i was still down with the holy spirit it's weird you just yeah you just, i would sit in my house and literally have person. these conversations with the holy that's spirit. the one person in the trinity people don't get <laughs> it was the opposite because i used to sit right even when i was like man god okay i get jesus i'm not even sure he's really historical but i, I my my belief in the holy spirit never wavered so even when i was deep down about christianity mm. i would sit and have conversations with the holy spirit I was mm. always very aware of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So that's just the, the power. And you know, it's, it's the spirit that draws people to God. And mm. I really feel that God used that to help me because when I began to hear this voice in my head, it was easy for me to not ignore mm. because I knew, somehow I knew that God spoke to me. And I think it was the Holy Spirit that was helping me. The Holy Spirit, even when I was going through my whole deliverance thing, it was very interesting the Holy Spirit was literally telling me what to do. It's when I sit back now that I realize that it was the Holy Spirit. But mm. honestly, I felt like I was literally following instructions to get mm. to Jesus. Mm. And that's the thing. He's a teacher. He's an instructor. Mm. He would teach you the truth. Mm. And the Holy Spirit is really important, guys, in this age of fake teachings. Mm-hmm. Because he's going to show you the difference between error mm-hmm. and the truth. Mm. So, mm. Yeah. yes, my God. I mean, I know, you know, just... Just to, to round up, I know people have their misgivings, is the right word, about the Catholic Church, okay? Mm. And as someone from a Catholic background, mm. I would say, some people say, oh, you know, don't go to the Catholic Church, or, you know, if you're Catholic, you're not a Christian, and there's all sorts oh, of... what? Are you joking? Things, yeah, there's all sorts of, you know, things that, that fly about, but... I would say the Catholic Church has its pros and its cons, okay? Like any other denomination. Like any other denomination. However, there's something, um, and if you if you look about, if you if you think about the psychology of, of teaching, there's something about the repetitive ritualistic nature of the Catholic Church's principles and practices that means it stays with people for a long time oh jews do it as well it's a part of meditation whether that's deliberate or not by the founding fathers of the catholic church i don't know but it's been proven psycho you know psychologically and and learning theories the repetition is a way of memorizing things to recall later and a lot of other religions use it yeah it's very biblical yes and it's a biblical principle you will find that there are people who perhaps don't have access to any other denominations but the Catholic Church. And God will use that to plant a seed. 
Oh, there yeah. are stories that will be heard by these little children um, that perhaps because that relationship factor isn't, you know, stressed upon in the Catholic Church, they might break away a bit like myself, break away. But those stories and those oh. principles that they learn. The catechism, guys, <laughs> it is, it is, it, it, what Sidoni is saying, she's such a great foundation because you know what? I learned this in the catechism when I was six years old and I can still say, do you remember God? Why did God make us? Do you remember that? <laughs> do you remember that? Speak for yourself. To say this to <laughs> no, I can't still remember because they said God made us because he mm. loves us and he wants us to be happy with him forever in heaven. Is that mm. not true? Mm -hmm. I learned mm -hmm. this when I was six years old, guys. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is the thing because we used to sit there and we will recite the catechism. Yeah. They will set us questions for RE exam. It's the same with all the other Catholic prayers. And I think it's in the book of Joshua where God says, meditate on these things day and night. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church has a very strong meditative and devotional culture. I almost feel like we're undercover PRs for the Catholic Church now. I know, right? But the right. truth is, you know, I, know, I, mean, I think it's so much bad oh, rep that I think it's important to say some of the things that they do. Like. The Catholic Church that are good. There is yeah. even a lot of things in the order of the mass that are beautiful, yeah. right? For me, my only big difference with the Catholic Church is really the Marian doctrines and the veneration oh. of saints. Oh. Apart from that, I really, and guys, like when you go to the song masses, where you can speak Latin, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's where you go. That's where you go. Anyway, yeah. You speak Latin, guys. It takes you to another level. I'm not gonna lie. I am Latin at school, right? So those things are meaningful to me. I understand that it doesn't mean it, but it's like in Pentecostal church where people pray in tongues, right? Mm -hmm. If you are gifted and you understand it, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Latin is kind of like the tongues of the Catholic Church. <laughs> Girl, you're going to places now. <laughs> I mean, those rugby schools. It takes you places, guys. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, I, you know, I just I'm just saying that you know God will those seeds that are planted in no matter the denominations, God will use yes. them to draw people back to Him later on in life. So if yes, you have absolutely, absolutely, um, or you think, oh, you know, my my parents were Anglican, and so you know, Doesn't I'm matter. gonna I'm gonna christen my children, but you know, we don't really go to church because you know we don't really believe in. Take your children to church. Yeah, let them decide at least. Take you them know, don't to think that opportunity those, away from them. Yeah, let them hear those repetitive, um, mundane, as some people messages. call it, messages. Um, oh, it speaks. It might, it might not be, you know, an evangelical church. It might not be a Pentecostal church. But those messages will stick. Those, those yes. Bible stories will stick. Um, at 40 years old or 30 years old or 20 years old, God will use one of those yeah bible stories in sunday school as we used to call it back then to bring them, to bring them back to him um and so yeah and i know the catholic church gets a, a lot of bad rep but i just wanted to say no i i, I almost find it. myself kind of defending the catholic church and mm -hmm. i also and i kind of feel like and i know this is a kind of territorial catholic thing but i kind of think if you weren't raised in the catholic church like you have no business really like you kind of don't know this <laughs> enough Right. Oh, so, I think we but, need, yeah, we need yes. to say goodbye. But yes. it's been yes, it's been a great conversation, way better than mm -hmm. I even thought it would be. Thank you so much, Sidoni. And thank, thank you everybody you. for listening. I know we've run on a little bit longer than we normally would, but I hope you mm -hmm. enjoyed this conversation and I hope you've learned something from it. Have a lovely, lovely evening, and we'll see you next week. Sidoni, do you want to pray us out very quickly? Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these conversations that we have. We thank you for the unity of the Christian church. We ask, Lord, that we'd be more united across denominations so that we can reflect more to the world around us, your glory, your power, your um, your grace and your love for the world, Lord. For as you say, Lord, in um, John 3, 16, that you so love the world that you sent your only son um, to die for us so that those who believe in you shall not perish but have eternal life. And so, Lord, we are asking that um, across denominations we would... Um, pass on this message to the world around us that people will learn of your love um, whether that's um, in the Catholic Church and that they will just find those stepping stones um, to a relationship with you um, and just those introductory stones that will get them to even open up the Bible for the first time or even say a simple prayer for the first time or even maybe just learn the Lord's Prayer for the first time. Um, Heavenly Father we thank you so much for this opportunity 
we pray lord that you would be with everybody um, that's been with us and those that are listening on, on playback you would bless them and keep them lord until we come back next thursday to have another chat in jesus name amen 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 have a lovely evening everyone thank you very much for listening thank bye you. bye